In previous years, one could get away without a well-designed mobile website, but now with 57% of the search traffic coming from mobiles and tablets, it's no longer optional. What is mobile-first indexing? How is it affecting the rankings? Keep watching to find out more. Responsive web design. The web design that enables your website to adapt to different screens and layouts is said to be responsive. To elaborate, think of the content as water and the different types of displays as containers. The water would mold itself to the shape of the containers to fit in all. Your website and content should be functioning that way. The content put up on the website should look as per the need of the screen being used by the user. The browsers of most mobile phones are unable to understand JavaScript or media queries, bringing in the need to create a primary website and enhancing it for mobile phones. The complex sites won't work for cell phones. A responsive web design site uses flexible images, proportion-based grids, and CSS3 media queries. The data and flexible photos align themselves in percentages rather than pixels or points. It increases the utility of the screen. The content is resized, hidden, enlarged, or removed to make the website responsive. Content and context. The target population should be evaluated. The information should be gathered regarding what they are looking for at your website. It can be worked out through Google Analytics. The data collected should be chalked out to evaluate what are the most relevant things to be displayed on the homepage and thereof. The sequence of important to less important information can solve the purpose to quite an extent. Since the mobile screens are smaller in size, make sure that the relevant information resides at the top as no one would bother to switch pages or scroll down to search for it. There are plenty of competitor websites. The local results bring in a lot of traffic according to SEO. Thereby, the information regarding the address, content number, directions, etc. should be available to the user with a click. Thus, it's advisable to enlist the vital things first. Navigation. Who would admire your website if one has to go through the time-consuming process of scrolling through the data to finally get your contact details? Neither would someone applaud you for the navigation option popping right in the middle of the mobile screen, thereby restricting the view of the actual website. Navigation is somewhat quite easy to think of, but a difficult task to design for. According to Brad Frost, it should be there as a good friend when needed the most, but it doesn't mean that it lingers around your site everywhere. The best thing that works is to put it as a button with a drop-down menu in some corner of the website so that the purpose is solved entirely. Keep it simple and user-friendly. Also, check out the size of the navigation button. Since the user would use fingers to tap on, the button size shouldn't be a problem. Finger compatibility. The links on the website should be able to be tappable. There is no benefit of linking something to a finger incompatible link. It would instead award more harm than good. Check out the size of the link you're providing. We usually use a thumb to scroll down. Make sure that the page is scalable with the help of the thumb of the user. For more info on best practices when it comes to mobile web design, visit our site today. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.